All right, boys and girls, let's get to it. The PGL 2022 Antwerp Major is about to kick off. And I figured, why don't we start with a recap? Why don't we go back to the qualifiers and figure out how these 24 teams actually got to the major in the first place? I think that would help you guys to get to know the teams, get to know their stories, all the storylines coming into the tournament, who are the favorites, who are the underdogs, who were lucky to qualify, who were good to qualify, etc., etc. I covered the entirety of the qualifier from Romania at the PGL studio. So I have a deep insight as to how it went off the teams. I basically watched every single game of every single team qualifying for the major. So in this video, I'll give you guys a recap, give you guys the stories, and I guess warm up for what's gonna be one of the biggest CSGO events ever, the PGL 2022 Antwerp Major. I am so freaking pumped for it, and so should you be. All right. We may as well jump into it, starting off with the America's Armor. Teams like Furia, Complexity, MIBR, Party Astronauts, Castle, Liquid, EG, Imperial, Sao Cantao, Pain, Zero Zero Nation, Bad News Beer, Isarus 90, Team One Esports, and Levalian all tried to qualify for the major. Now, only six spots, six spots were up for grabs. One, becoming a legend, two, becoming a challenger, and three, becoming contenders. It was a tough one, you know? A lot of these teams were equal. Coming into the tournament, a lot of people have high expectations to Furia, Complexity looked good, MIBR started to play well, obviously Team Liquid being one of the main favorites. Then you had Evil Geniuses, who on paper looked like a scary team, but Jesus, they played like a sack of potatoes, but more about that later. Imperial, etc. We had some, some of the favorites coming in. I'm just gonna pick a few of the teams and give you the storylines for them, just so you get a sense for what happened. And if you're interested, you can see my entire rating of the America's Armor over on my Twitter. I gave them from one to six stars, and I basically walked through all the different teams and gave them stars based on how well I thought they did and what they kind of performed like during the, the Amar. Starting off with Furia. They did a good job. They beat all their opponents, never even breaking a sweat. They went 3-0 just to beat MIBR in the decider game for a legend spot. They never broke a sweat. Furia were without a doubt the best team at the qualifier and they come into the major as a legend and they come in with high expectations. They come in with a, a great amount of confidence. Furia right now is a team you have to look out for. They were a little bit disappointing during the blast showdown, ended up losing the final game to Pain Gaming, but Pain on the other hand played some fantastic Counter-Strike. So can't really blame Furia for that. I look out for Furia. They did, they did well. They did very well. Another team who did well was MIBR and Imperial for that matter. Let's take them together. The two Brazilian squads. MIBR being a team that for a long, long period, the last two years, I've said it a couple of times, they've been boring, right? Nothing happens with MIBR. They were always playing Blast. They were always invited to close qualifiers, but they never really managed to do anything, you know, despite all the fans backing them up and cheering them up. As of recently, though, during the qualifier right here, during Blast Showdown, and I'd say the last six months, MIBR is actually growing into becoming a good team. I'm getting excited when I watch them play. I look at the Counter-Strike they play, and I think that's a solid squad. We saw it during this qualifier as well. They qualified with no problems. They won th the first three games qualified, and then they played on the side again, against Furia where they yeah they lost to Furia and honestly speaking a lot of people do lose to Furia so no shame in that whatsoever. Imperial different case I'd say right here. They're coming into the major with the last dance project and I thought coming into this qualifier that they would have a tough time qualifying. I was not really sure what to expect in terms of their level but they played some some solid counter-strike. You could see the experience, you could see their motivation, their passion for the game was still there and to me that made me super super happy. So despite being kind of a kind of an underdog I'd say coming into this qualifier, Imperial delivered, they qualified they beat party astronauts in the decider game and and to be honest right it went three maps and they were down at some point on the third map only winning 16 to 13 so they were close you know getting into a, a scenario where they would have to play one more game to qualify so it wasn't all easy for imperial but just to qualify is impressive for them complexity kind of did what they were supposed to do they look strong without being a for me at least a real contender it's a decent squad qualified in, in fourth place and can be somewhat proud of it team liquid they started out losing to zero zero nation you see zero zero nation wasn't even close qualifying for this tournament but liquid started out losing 16 to 8 they got demolished by zero zero nation melton the boys destroyed them and you thought to yourself oh my goodness liquid are you gonna are you gonna bottle this are you actually gonna fuck this one up well Liquid, they turned it around, man. The next two games, they won 16-3, 16-1, and then they won the last game 2-0 as well, qualifying for the majors. So despite only finishing fifth, it was really, never really in doubt for, for Team Liquid. Now, the real story of this tournament, something I want to highlight right here, is 9C. They lost their two first game. They started out by losing their first two game 
which means that they were just one game away from getting eliminated. Then they won the following three games, which placed them in the bracket where they have to qualify and play out for the last spot. Bear in mind, there's only six spots for the America's Armour. So only, not only did they have to win three games in a row to stay alive in the tournament, they had to win two more in a row in order to qualify for the tournament, which they did. So basically, they went from being 0-2 to 5-2, then qualifying for the Major. Absolutely outstanding performance from 9C. Obviously, coming into the media, they're not one of the favorites to win it. They're not one of the favorites to go into the legend stage. But just the fact that they qualified in the fashion they did was hella impressive. So if there's any 9C fanboys out there, you got to be super, super, super proud of your team. That leaves the rest of the team right here not qualifying. I'm just going to pick up on a couple. Pain Gaming came close. Did they deserve it? Well, not really because they weren't good enough at this tournament. But they are a solid team. We saw that during Blast Showdown where they beat Fury and qualified for Lisbon. Looking forward to see them there. But they came close, you know, not quite able to, to win against 9C. EG was the biggest disappointment to me. One of the most expensive North American teams of all time didn't qualify through probably the weakest NA qualifier in a long, long time. Fucking hell. Evil geniuses. Come on, man. It's it's unacceptable. The players are aware. The organization is aware. And right now, there's a lot of rumors circulating this lineup. Roster changes, etc. So, for ET not to qualify, that's a big yikes. I'd say outside of that, everything went kind of as expected. Party edge do not. As said, they were close beating Imperial, which would have put them on the third place. So, you know, close. Not quite there. Zero Zero Nation, slightly disappointing. Cold Zero Squad. I thought they would do better, you know, I'm a streamer for Zero Zero Nation and I had high expectations for them, but they weren't able to, to make it and unfortunately they didn't qualify for the major. So, unlucky for Zero Zero Nation, which leaves us with these six teams qualifying. Furia, MIBI, Imperial, Complexity, Liquid and 9C. All interesting teams. I think the only team who have a realistic chance of getting into the playoff as of right now would be Furia. The rest, I think they have to fight for just staying alive, but I'm excited to see how well they can do. Moving on to the Asia Pacific qualifier. Only four teams participated in this qualifier, contending for two spots, two contender status spots as well. As you can see, IHC and Renegade qualified. Highly surprising that Tai Lu didn't qualify, right? The Major and Tai Lu goes hand in hand. There's been so many Asian qualifiers where Renegades and Tai Lu have qualified over and over and over again. But IHC wanted it differently. They won both their games by then claiming first position and were the first team to qualify. A Mongolian team. Right? We don't really have that many players coming out of Mongolia. We don't really have that much history with Mongolian players at a major. But IHC, they came in, they conquered, and they played some fantastic Counter-Strike. They fully deserved the spot, which meant that only one of Renegades or Tai Lu could qualify. As I said, two teams who always qualify. Two teams who are notoriously always part of the major because they played the Asian qualifier. Now, only one of them had to qualify. Only had one of them could qualify. That ended up being Renegades. Tai Lu couldn't make it. They lost that game to Renegades, which meant that Renegades got a contender spot and Tai Lu didn't qualify for the major. Massive, massive disappointment for Benton and the boys. Looking for Orc, they came in as a replacement team. They didn't even qualify for this qualifier. Didn't do too much. You know, I still love the vibe, love the manager, love the guy behind it, but quality counters right there weren't quite there. They weren't good enough, but you know, kudos for showing up, kudos for trying. And yeah, as I said, looking for Orc didn't quite make it. Which leaves us to the next stage, the European Armour Group A. Here we have some of the biggest teams out there, right? Na'Vi, Heroic, Outsiders, Vitality, Face Clan, the best team in the world, number one and two in the same group. Mouse Sports, Big, Gamer Legion, Fnatic, OG, Eternal Fire, you name it, you name it right here. So let's look at it. Heroic qualified as a legend. I guess that was somewhat to be expected. What was impressive though, was that they beat Na'Vi. They beat Na'Vi in the 3-0 game, right? Either Na'Vi could have gone 3-0 and got the first place, or Heroic could have gone 3-0 and got the first place. Well, it ended up being Heroic for the first time ever they took down Na'Vi. Now, bear in mind that Na'Vi is going through a rough, rough situation with the whole thing going on in, yeah, let's call it Russia, Ukraine. Russia obviously being the aggressor, Ukraine defending their country, trying their best. Na'Vi is a Ukrainian-based organization. They have Russian players on the squad. So obviously the whole circumstance, circumstantial situation going on right now is, is not optimal. So credit for Na'Vi for showing up. As you can see, they qualified on a fourth place as a legend status, but losing to Heroic, maybe not the biggest surprise. And for Heroic, well, it meant a lot as they've lost, I think it was seven matches in a row to Heroic, oh, sorry, to Na'Vi. So, you know, maybe on a bit of a cheap notice, but a win is a win for Heroic. Now, the biggest surprise for me is big, big coming into this qualifier. I thought they'd be one of the teams that, looking at these squads, right? 
they may qualify. They may go 3-2. and two. They may, you know, clinch a 7th or an 8th or 6th spot. But Big Day played some beautiful, beautiful Counter-Strike. They took down Face Clan, the best team in the world in the 3-0 game. So coming into the Major, Big showcased us that they play some solid Counter-Strike. Special shout-out goes out to Crimbo, who's the new boy coming into the tournament. He won plenty of clutches, played a good tournament, and as said, they took down Face Clan. So that's something you have to respect. Big is a team that I look forward to see at the Major. Face Clan being the best team in the world, well, yeah, they lost to, to Big, but outside of that, they weren't really tested that much. They took down Vitality in a game as well, qualified as Legend, so no biggie. Same goes for Na'Vi, qualified as Legend. You know, no biggie. They had to play Force for that spot wanted relatively easy so all that makes sense now force qualifying was a bit of a surprise they had a i'm not gonna call it an easy route but you can see right here they lost to heroic then one against gamer legion the one against og and the ones against saw gaming so we'll talk more about it later so not really the toughest route to the major but they had to win right they had to get there so they, they claim a fifth spot and, and they should be proud of that they're part of the major and coming into it sure as an underdog but they won against the team they were supposed to win again and and i guess that's that's cool now vitality to me is the interesting prospect right here they started out playing against dignitas where they won then they lost a 16 14 game to face clan the best team in the world you'd expect that right then they won against eternal fire well you'd expect that then they lost to an army 2 you'd expect that and then in the last game against mouse they were one map away from being eliminated they were one map away from not making the major imagine a major without magics to pre saivu apex for that matter misuda it's a, a star starter lineup but they were so so close they were hard done by the draw you look at force right they had to beat gamer legion og and swords qualify for the major well vitality they had to beat dignitas eternal fire and mouse I guess that that's the same, right? But they also had to go up against Face and Navi, which is just tough, tough opponents. So you can excuse them for going 3-2. You can excuse them for being close, not qualifying. But they got the job done, and that's what matters. Eternal Fire, the same thing. They won against OG in the last final game. Impressive, really, I gotta say. Outsiders as well, they struggled and barely beat Saw. And that's when I want to take this conversation. I want to give a massive shout-out to these boys right here. Outsiders is a team we expected to qualify. It's a... I'd say a quality team, a team that can even go into the playoff at the Major. They had to play the 2-2 game against Saw. A game that was... Oh my god. I have never I've never felt so bad watching a game. I'm not gonna lie, I was rooting for Saw. The Portuguese dream, the Portuguese boys, they did so, so well. But no, they didn't qualify. They couldn't qualify because they lost the round at 15-14. With a 0 0.01 second defuse coming in by Jam and a no scope for one of the Saw players who leg shot at the guy instead of killing him. I have never seen anything as heartbreaking in my entire freaking life. I was feeling bad, I was so sorry, and I felt for the Saw guys. For them to qualify for the major would have been life changing, and they were so, so close. So, Saw Gaming, I would say the one team that we're not going to see at the major that. I wouldn't necessarily say they deserved it right, they had to win their games, but it just felt so heartbreaking, man. They played so, so well, and it just... 0 0.01 seconds on a diffuse. The game went into overtime, Outsiders won it, and yeah, Yekinda and the boys qualified. And to be honest, right, it would have been a bit of a shame if Outsiders didn't qualify as well. Yekinda is a quality player, so is James, so... I guess for the competitive integrity of the tournament, you like to see that. Some of the disappointments, Mousebots, they had to play Vitality in the 2-2 game. Tough one for them. OG, again, slightly disappointing, not qualifying for the Major. They are a quality team. Fnatic, <sighs> fucking hell. Yeah, Fnatic, you know, just, just, it. Jesus, I don't even want to talk about it. It's, it's terrible. What, what's happened to the Fnatic organization, the CSGO roster the last two years? Embarrassing. Not really worth talking about. There's a couple of interesting players on the lineup still, but as a team right now, they're hard to get excited about. None of the rest right here were any close qualifying. I think Dickens has played a decent tournament without getting close. These boys never really got a shot and, and weren't close to qualifying. As said, you can also check out my ratings for that if you want to. Rated all the different teams from 1 to 6 over on my Twitter, so make sure to jump over there if you want to see it more in depth. Which leaves us to Group B. Teams like G2, X Gambit, Players, now Cloud9. <laughs> a lot of different names right there. NIP, Entropic, Flames, Astralis, Ens, Heat, Sinner, Spirit, ASG, Sprout, Bad News Eagles, Endpoint, Sangle Esports, and Anonymous. Sprout had to play the majority of the tournament with a coach as one of the players was sick. Not really interesting. Sangle had to play the entire tournament with a coach. Again, sorry for them, but not really interesting. Never got close. Entropic, the biggest disappointment of this group. They were one of the favorites to qualify. They didn't. 
They didn't. As you can see down here, Entropic actually very disappointing. Lost to Bad News Eagles. Shit happens. Won a close game against Endpoint. Ah, close. I guess lost to Anonymo and lost 0-2 to Heat. They were never really close of qualifying. Same goes for Endpoint. They didn't really have the quality to, to qualify. They beat Sprout. That's it, you know. I, I believe Sprout were playing with a coach in that game, so slightly disappointing. Same goes for AST. The only team they beat in the tournament was Sangle, who also played with a coach as said. Now, Heat Gaming is interesting, right? Because they were so, so close. So, so close. They lost against Astralis 1 2 as you see one here. Heat Gaming. You look at the name Lucky, Buddy, Afro, Joko, Exercise, anything. Hmm, are they supposed to qualify for the meta? Not really, but they played a good tournament. Against Astralis, they were 1 up in maps, 1 0 in maps, and they were leading 14 to 11 on the second map. 14 to 11 on the second map, and Astralis had a force buy on Ancient. Astralis won that force buy, they claimed the victory on Ancient, and they won the last deciding map and qualified for the Major, which meant that Heat didn't qualify. They were two rounds away from qualifying for the Major. They were two rounds away from sending Astralis out of the Major for the first time ever, which would have been a massive disaster. So kudos to Heat Gaming. They tried their absolute best. I feel sorry for them. Same goes for Anonymous. They started off well. They beat G2 in the very first game right here on Mirage in overtime. Lost to players, won against Entropic, lost to Ents, lost to Spirit. I think the Ents loss, or sorry, the Spirit loss right here is the disappointing one. If you want to qualify for a major, you got to be able to beat uh, Spirit. The same can be said about Sinners right here. They beat who they had to beat, I'd say. Lost some, some games to Flames, NIP, you'd expect that. But the last deciding game, if you're not able to beat Bad News Eagles, well, you're not good enough to qualify for the major. Which leaves us to the eight teams that qualified. Spirit, as said, they won against Anonymous. They got the job done. Coming into the major, one of my... One of my... One of the teams I, ex I expect, you know, to, to not do too well. Uh, one of the teams that I expect to... I expect them not to qualify for the next stage. Let's be honest. They're not really that good. I, I think they got a little bit lucky being in the weaker group. Bad News Eagles, though. The passion they played with in this tournament, that was absolutely outstanding. The way they qualified was absolutely outstanding. I loved every single moment of watching these guys play. Now, don't overestimate them. They beat Entropic. That's a good win. Lost to NIP. Expected. Lost to G2. Expected. Beat ASU. ASG, so convincingly. And then won against Sinners 2-1. to one. I'd say that's a good that's a good run right here. They didn't have to beat anyone out of the ordinary, so maybe a bit of a cheap notice, but the passion they played with, the motivation that came out of these guys, it was fantastic to see Bad News Eagles do so well. I'm excited to see them at the major, and I actually have them as a as a as a as a dark horse, you know, to do some damage. I can see them win a couple of best ones. I can see them cause some troubles to a couple of teams out there. So I'm looking very much forward to see Bad News Eagles at the Major. Excited they qualified. What would it cover Astralis? As said, down 14 to 11 on the second map after losing the first. So close up not qualifying, but they got the job done. Finally against Heat Gaming qualified. G2, a bit shaky. Uh, not really looking too good, I'm not gonna lie. But then again, outside of the loss to Anonymous, they won against uh, Sangle, they won against uh, Bad News Eagles, and they won against Astralis in a close game as well. So they got the job done without really being too impressive. Ents as well. The only team Ents lost to was Astralis, if I'm not mistaken, right here. Yes, on overpass, they had a terrible T side. They were actually good at their CT side, but that was it. They beat Spirit in convincing fashion. They beat Heat Gaming, no problem. They beat Anonymous 2 0. Ents is looking like a team that is coming into the major. And I have them as a bit of a. A bit of a dark horse to actually qualifying for the playoff. Not only for the Legend States, but going all the way to the playoff. They are looking solid right now. And just recently qualified for Lisbon as well. So that's very interesting. NIP, my friends. NIP, one against Endpoint, one against Bad News Eagles. Lost to Copenhagen Flames, who were the big surprise of this tournament. Quite convincing as well. Then beat Sinner. So NIP, they, they did what they had to do. All right, they also beat Ents in a, in a decider game for, for getting the Legend status. That's why NIP are Legends and Ents are only challengers. So NIP with a good tournament, not gonna lie. Players, they did what they have to do. Uh, won a, a close game against Astralis. That's also part of the Astralis history, right? They only lost 1-2 to players, 1-2 to G2. So despite them being so close and not qualifying, they also had a hard draw and actually played a good tournament. So did players qualifying. Now, the biggest surprise for me is Copenhagen Flames. Coming into this tournament, I had them as a team who would qualify as a contender or challenger, but for them to play as a legend, super impressive. One easily, I'd say, against Sprout. One easily against Sinners and took down NIP 2-0. The perfect qualifier one for Copenhagen Flames. They couldn't get any better whatsoever. Very, very impressive display. Very, very well thought out. And I think they did a fantastic job. So well done to the Copenhagen Flames guys. Really, really impressed. Which leaves them qualifying as a legend status. Netting $42,500. Coming into the major. Feeling good about themselves, hopefully. That gives us these teams 
for the major. Heroic Copenhagen Flames, Big Cloud9, Furrier Face Ninjas, and Navi as Legends. Challengers would be Ens, G2, Force, Astralis, Vitality, MIBR, Imperial, Bad News Eagles, and Contenders, Eternal Fire, Spirit, Outsiders, Complexity, IHC, Renegades, Team Liquid, and 9C. Now, we walk through the, the teams, we walk through how they qualified. I hope all you guys are ready for the major. I am looking very much forward to it. It starts off with the challenger states, and just like everywhere else, it's a very simple system. So let me simplify it for you, my friends. If you win three games, you progress. You have then finished in top eight, no matter what. If you lose three games, you're out. Top eight qualifies for the legend stage where they play the eight legend teams. Those teams are not playing in the first week of the major, they play in the second week. If you finish in bottom eight, you're out of the tournament and the major is over for you. You can see round one right here, Ince going up against 9C, G2 versus Liquid, Banger game, Force against Renegades, etc, etc. So the games are already out there. I'm looking super much forward to the majors to start. It all kicks down Monday, my friends. Monday, so you better be ready. If you guys like this video, if you guys enjoyed this little recap, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment below the video. I really, really appreciate you guys sharing the video as well. Let's make sure that everyone out there with just a small interest in Counter-Strike is as well-dressed as possible for the major to begin starting Monday. So send them this recap video so they can see how the teams qualified. Check out my Twitter ratings if you're interested and make sure to be ready for the major. It all goes down Monday and I cannot wait. Pimp Jacob, over and out. Fucking hell. Yeah, Fnatic, you know, just, just, it, Jesus. I don't even want to talk about it. It's, it's terrible.